an agreement with uh, a phased pause in the fighting, women and children first, and to continue this in phases as you proceed with aid going in as well. Uh, this is being presented, as we understand it now, to Hamas. In the past, they have insisted on an immediate permanent ceasefire before any hostages can be released. Do you think there's a chance that they might agree to this, or would their veto be a deal breaker? Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak here today at the Atlantic Council, and I'm honored to be with both of you, Andrea and David. Uh, well, actually, uh, I think that uh, right now, if I will describe it, uh, the progress uh, that we are achieve, that we are making uh, in the last couple of weeks is, is we are in much better place than where we were uh, a few weeks ago. We have seen that uh, the whole process was working in November that resulted in the release of 109 hostages, and unfortunately, this uh, process fallen apart uh, at that time. And the intensity of the war actually increased. That made the situation more uh, complex. As you have highlighted, that uh, there was a clear demand of the permanent ceasefire ahead of the negotiations, which I believe that uh, we moved from that place to a place where it has potentially might lead to a ceasefire uh, permanently in the future. And this is what we are all aiming for, because we've seen also the suffering of the people in Gaza, and we've seen the amount of destruction over there. Now, our uh, main role as a mediator is trying to our best in, to get a negotiated solution where it can bring uh, the hostages uh, safely back to their homes. Yet also stopping the bombing uh, in Gaza and the c continuation of, of the killing of the civilians. We've seen the numbers are increasing dramatically. And uh, I, I mean, uh, what I think that uh, we are seeing in Gaza is not resulting with the, is not getting any result to get the hostages back, but the process is the one which is getting them back. Now, on what you have laid, uh, Andrea, uh, I don't know where did you get all these details on, on the proposals and the framework, but uh, I can say you are well informed. Uh, we have, uh, I think yesterday was uh, good progress made uh, to get uh, things back in shape and to at least to lay a foundation for the way forward. Uh, we cannot uh, say that this uh, will make us you know, uh, in better shape very soon. But we are hoping, actually, uh, uh, to relay this proposal to Hamas and to get them to a place where uh, they engage positively and constructively in the process. Because we think that in, in, uh, in today's world, I think that's the only game in town now. And that will be the only way to get the situation de-escalated. And we hope that both parties taking this opportunity to get, of course, uh, 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 to make the war stop, but also to get the hostages back to them. Let me ask you as a follow-up whether if the United States retaliates against Iran for the attack in Jordan that killed at least three American soldiers and dozens more were injured, if that were to happen, do you think that that would scuttle the deal? Well, first of all, Andrea, uh, I express my condolences today to the secretary in our meeting for the loss of, of the uh, three soldiers. And we are hoping that the injured will to Secretary Blinken. To the Secretary Blinken, yeah, uh, will recover soon. And of course, an, uh, the attack that happened in Jordan is condemned, uh, uh, infringing uh, Jordan's sovereignty, or also undermining the efforts of the coalition uh, anti-ISIS is not something that can be acceptable. Uh, what uh, uh, actually what we've been warning from is the bigger picture in the region, and we've been warning from day one that this war has a potential of expanding and spillover in the region, and we are seeing this building up, unfortunately, in the last three months and a half. 
I hope that uh, nothing would undermine the efforts that we are doing or jeopardize the process, uh, yet it will definitely have an impact on it and will, uh, uh, one way or another, it will have an impact on, on the regional security and we hope that uh, things get contained and not to get escalated beyond control.